Um, my name is Morten Rasmussen. I work for ARM. Um, I suggested this PowerWare scheduling buff session, uh, hoping to meet some people that are interested in this topic um, and have some useful discussions. Um, I hope this will be very interactive. So, um, and because it's all recorded, please use the microphone when you ask questions. Um, actually, it would be better if you sat closer up here so we could have some, uh, some interaction. Um, so please move forward if, um, if you want to participate in the discussion. Um, I'm not sure what, what the audience here today is really. Um, I have some slides I can talk about what we, are, what we have been working on, why we're trying to push this power OS scheduling idea, give you an overview of what we've been working on, what have been discussed at a workshop at Kernel Summit on Wednesday. Um, but really, I want to hear uh, what your interest is in, in this topic as well and, and how you deal with power management on your systems. If any of you are developers um, working on specific applications on specific systems, what, what challenges are you facing? Um, how do you figure out when is my system tuned well enough? Well, what's important for you? Is it tuning CPU freak? Is it tuning CPU idle? Because we, we are discussing various ways of, of actually changing these things. So it would be very useful to have your feedback um, for, for these changes. So PowerWare scheduling is not just about the scheduler. It's about the scheduler and all the power management frameworks that we have in the kernel today. Um, most prominently, we have CPU frag and CPU idle. Um, E the, e these two frameworks both have uh, drivers and governors that sort of try to implement some, some power management policy, pick the best C state, pick the base, best P state. But as it is right now, they're actually completely uncoordinated and they don't get any information or they don't give any information back to the scheduler. So we sort of have the scheduler doing something, places tasks running on one CPU or another CPU, and then depending on what the scheduler did, CPU idle tries to do the best thing with whatever the scheduler decided just before. Um, this is not ideal. Um, we could do much better if the scheduler actually knew about what are, what are our idle states, what's actually the cost of waking up this CPU compared to this CPU. Um, because if you have on ARM systems, we have uh, typically various couple P states, sorry, C states, and it might be very expensive to pick one CPU over the other if it means powering up an extra set of CPUs. So there is a good potential there for actually improving things by, by making the um, CPU idle, CPU frag, and the uh, frameworks talk to the scheduler. Um, so this is really what, what PowerWare scheduling is all about. Um, I tried to depict here roughly how the, the, the different power management policies are, are playing together today. We have the, the scheduler, it decides the load balancing, it decides, it decides which CPU to wake up if we need another one. Um, but it doesn't really know anything about C states or P states. That's something that happens sort of by the side and you can actually have some, some really bad side effects by not having this coordinated. For example, if your CPU frag um, governor is too slow to react to the load of the CPU, the scheduler might actually see that the CPU is, is becoming overloaded and start moving tasks away. But the reason why it's being overloaded is because it's running at a too low frequency and CPU frag just haven't ramped it up yet. Um, so this is a, clearly a problem. So we need to, to fix that. this, we need to coordinate things. And this is what this work is all about. Um, so yeah, some of the issues that we're seeing right now is this scheduler CPU freight scheduler feedback loop, which is not there at the moment, um, which means that if CPU freight is too slow, the scheduler might do some suboptimal choices. Um, other things that we need to save power is um, another thing called task packing. Uh, at the moment, what we're seeing is if you have sort of a likely load scenario, where you have, we see it on Android, for example, where we have things waking up in the background. If you just 
doing nothing really, just look at your home screen or something. As, as it is right now, the scheduler doesn't really care where things are, are, are waking up. So you might wake up different CPUs at different times, which is clearly not ideal from, a, from an idle perspective because it keeps CPUs in more shallow C states than are really necessary. So what we're working on is actually trying to figure out when can we pack all these tasks to actually run on just one CPU and that will be the one waking up all the time and then leaving the rest of them in, in deeper C states and therefore save, save power. Um, these are just some of the things. We, we need to just add topology awareness into the scheduler so it makes better choices. And that was really what was discussed on Wednesday in, uh, in the workshop at, at, the, at Kernel Summit. Another thing which is really important for ARM is we, we need some support in there for our big little architecture, uh, which adds another dimension of complexity to, to, to this problem. But, but it's all a part of, of the same solution. We, we can't really take out one problem and just work on that. We need, we need to consider the whole thing. So um, there are some things that we wish would be there in, 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 in the scheduler. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with, with all how things have been developing in the scheduler recently, but in 3.11 there was added uh, a different way of estimating how tasks, the weight of tasks inside the scheduler. In the past they were just assigned a static weight, so no matter how much or how little a task was running, it, it had sort of the same weight in the load balance calculations. Uh, that was changed, so now the load of the task is actually based on the history of execution of that task. Um, that is good, but that history is affected by CPU frag because the way the history is constructed is that it's based on the time that the task was actually running in the past. And if you lower your frequency, it means that your task is running more and it will appear to be bigger. Um, so here you have this feedback thing again that needs to, needs to be sorted out. So clearly there needs to be some, some, uh, some integration between the scheduler and CPU frag. Um, yeah, and in general we need topology awareness and there are other things we want to, to address as well. It, there are lots of things we want to integrate into this solution. And that's the thermal and power budget awareness um, on systems we see on some systems we see that, that we have a fixed power budget and we can't just run everything uh, at the same time. Um, and that's not just CPUs we're talking about here, it can also be GPUs or other subsystems. Things that are, are not taken care of at all at the moment, but things we wanna, we wanna address going forward. Um, so yeah, I've tried to illustrate here um, what we have in the, in the scheduler at the moment and some blue boxes showing what we would like to have in there. Um, so we want to extend the, uh, the topology information we have in the scheduler with extra knowledge about um, power domains, clock domains, things like that. We need to do that in the scheduler to make energy aware decisions. Um, and we need extra features in the load packing algorithms. Uh, we need this scale invariant so we don't have the CPU frag pro problem with the, uh, with the track load of each task. And this all needs to go in there somehow. We, we don't have a, a pad set yet that does all of this. There's been proposed a number of, of different solutions over the last year or so, packing, integrating different things, but they haven't really, they don't really fit together uh, as it is right now. So, so we need to, to work together and, and, and figure out how, how is this all going to work um, to, to create the solution. Um, so the outcome of, of the Kernel Summit workshop that we had, had on Wednesday is that there was a broad agreement that we need to move the power awareness into the scheduler. Um, we can't let it sit outside because it will be very hard to define. We, we, if we were to let CPU frag and CPU idle exist as they are today, we would need to define interfaces between the CPU frag governor and the scheduler, and it would be very hard to define a proper interface there. So the proposal is move that functionality into the scheduler. 
and actually one of the first steps that we might look at is actually moving CPU idle into the scheduler and maybe completely get rid of the governor concept because if we're in the scheduler we have much better information about what's going to happen and that may completely eliminate reason for having, having governors. If the scheduler is just the best place to have it, then just let that drive um, uh, idle state selection. Um, so that's one of the things that will be worked on. Um, pretty much everyone agreed that CPU freight is not fit for its purpose if, uh, if we want to drive it from, from the scheduler. One of the problems we have with the CPU freight framework as it is today is that drivers are actually allowed to sleep and if you try to call that driver from a scheduling context, you actually get a recursive call into the scheduler. So it's, it doesn't work as it is. We need, we need something else. And on some platforms, f changing frequency is actually not that complicated. If you take Intel, for example, it's just writing a register, and that's it. That's easy to do from a, from a scheduler context. And if we do it from the scheduler, we can change the frequency based on what we know is being scheduled. We don't have to wait until uh, the load goes up and the CPU freight driver recognizes that, oh, there's something running now, I should ra ramp up the frequency. If we do it from the scheduler, we can ask for frequency change at the same moment as we're scheduling a task, which we know based on its load history is a big task that will need the, uh, the frequency to go up. Um, to make energy aware uh, decisions, we need to put more information into the scheduler about what, how, how does this, this platform actually work? Well, what sort of energy can I save if I wake up this CPU compared to this CPU? Um, so that was also one of the outcomes of the, of the workshop. Uh, that was, we, we need some way of telling the scheduler what is the, the energy trade-off of ramping up the frequency on this CPU compared to waking up another one and, uh, and putting tasks on that. Um, because, for example, the task packing I was talking about before, it's not so much about just packing tasks on, until the CPU is full. Um, because does that mean you should pack it until it reaches its maximum frequency and then when you have, have sort of overloaded the CPU at, at that frequency, then you should spill on to the next one? That might not be the most power efficient uh, way of doing things. It might be going maybe 50% or 80% up because then the last, uh, the last uh, frequencies you ramp up the, your voltage so much that's getting, getting too expensive in terms, of, in terms of energy. So if you have a number of tasks running at the same CPU, you might be better off by just splashing them on to, to, to the next one. So you can run two CPUs but at a, low, a lower frequency. Those things the scheduler doesn't know anything about today, and we need some, some weight or some information in there to, to let the scheduler make better decisions. Um, another thing that was discussed a lot was uh, benchmarks, power benchmarks. How do we actually evaluate whether the changes we're proposing are actually doing anything good? Um, the patches that have been proposed so far, some of them have come with a few numbers on some, a few simple workloads on one specific platform and so some improvement. But really, we need to figure out how to actually um, measure that the patches we are proposing are actually doing something good in sort of the broader sense. We don't have, as it is today, a, a benchmark suite of power benchmarks where we can say, okay, we can run all of these and we see improvement, improvements across most of them and therefore we should have these patches in. Uh, that is completely missing right now. Um, it's not an easy task because what, what is a power benchmark? How, how do we measure if, if we actually get what we want? It's, it's fairly easy for performance. You, you just run it and you measure the execution time, your throughput, whatever. But for power, it's not just about using the, the least possible power because it's fairly easy to save a lot of power um, on your phone, for example. You can just turn it off, then you save a lot of power. Um, so it's, it's really a trade-off. We, we need to find the right, right spot between performance and power. Maybe you, you're fine with giving away 10% of your performance if you can save 25% of your power. 
but clearly you're not willing to give, give away 90% of your performance to save a lot of power. Um, and it's not even that. For some workloads, we don't really care about performance. Well, we do. For example, video playback, as, as long as we get every frame, no frames are dropped, we're actually fine. So maybe the metric for, for a power benchmark is actually user experience in, 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 in some cases, but that's really, really hard to measure, and it's really hard to come up with a user experience score that will apply to all use cases that you can, you can think of. And that's actually one of the things where I think we, it would be nice to get some feedback from you. How, how do you actually tune your systems? If you have an application, when, when do you decide that now I have saved the, enough power and when do I get enough performance? Are you just monitoring your, your frame rate for video playback or, or how, how does it actually work for you? Is there anyone? Okay, so, so you're saying that, that your way of doing it is that you have, you have a power budget and you just do whatever it takes to, 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 to meet that power budget. But, but how did you come up with the power budget uh, to, to, to start with? Okay, maybe we should pass around. Is this working? Yes. Maybe we should pass around the microphone. Um. Yes. So, yes, so uh, my point was that uh, uh, when I used to work for TI, the methodology was to define power targets or power budget and thermal budget as well. Uh, in the early phase of the, the chip development. And then uh, uh, with this model that would produce a power target and a power budge budget. And then uh, once we got the software running, we would uh, compare the measurements with those uh, um, uh, budgets and try to reach the budgets and uh, iterate or even eventually uh, reassess the model because usually that was based on assumptions, so some of the yeah. assumptions was not fully accurate. And so this uh, iteration uh, was used to converge to, towards some supposed optimized power consumption for a given use case. Okay. And so uh, the other part of the, the answer was that we had no specific methodology to say that, uh, to, to tell us that yes, you didn't degrade the uh, user experience. Uh, that was the, the next uh, issue, uh, not issue, but uh, unresolved completely issue. Uh, like, what can we monitor to say that uh, those power optimization, uh, you usually when you do power optimization, you somehow degrade the performance by uh, entering more low power states, uh, running CPU lower, etc., etc., introducing more latencies in the system. And so we wanted to make sure that the user would, the final user, so we were working on mobile phones, so we wanted to make sure that the, the experience wasn't degraded. So in the case of the video playback, we were making sure the framework was fine. Uh, we were making sure that there was no uh, buffer underflow, for instance. So we were monitoring the, the video buffers and making sure there was no uh, underflow. Without any uh, underflow, we could say, okay, the there is no degradation. The jitter also, we would measure it, make sure you, there is no jittering and, uh, on the screen, things like this. Uh, for the uh, for, uh, audio playback, for instance, we were making sure there were no glitches. You, could, you couldn't hear any glitch. 
but there is no formal yet. I, I agree with you. There is no f uh, formal methodology to uh, a power benchmark. It's very nice to say it this way. There was no power, power match, uh, benchmark saying, yes, this one you're good. No, okay. Um, We are give you a discount on our technology for one cent a mobile phone. You install our power away schedule. You give back the information by the end user that uses your mobile phone, and then we know that your scheduling is doing something better. So it's uh, it's very nice. So using the mobile phone in the market to measure the uh, uh, because it's uh, at the end I know the problematic, but uh, then the user experience so the data collected by the real devices because they use. Uh, they can play video and sometimes, they can listen to the music, they can do everything. So, so I think that uh, user experience, uh, so coordination between manufacturer and user mobile phone and ARM or Intel company will be the best to prove, to give a proof of concept of your scheduling algorithm for power aware. Because, uh, and this is very fast, uh, because you can collect every information you want from video subsystem to audio subsystem to everything, so, and you know exactly what the tasks do, what the, <coughs> the, the standard use case of the, the, the end user, because yeah, right now you don't know. So ba basically Silicon Valley or um, end user vendor, like mobile phone vendor, can you give you an idea what is the use case, the typical use case, uh, and in this use case you can balance your, uh, uh, you can um, have an idea what is the good benchmark uh, to test your algorithmics. So there are some of what you had the script like uh, uh, balancing uh, is nothing to prove in that one. If the frequency scaling uh, uh, change the balance of the task, uh, this need to be fixed because this is a problem. So, in, mm -hmm. so this is not uh, related to power aware. It's related that it's wrong. The calculation is, is wrong. So you yeah. need to account the right to you need to give the right way to the task. But for me, because uh, I work a lot on this, and what I think is, uh, and uh, only the, the end user can give a proof of concept of what you are doing. And uh, uh, now, the only way for me is uh, let the end user to test the algorithmics. And if you are in the position to say, okay, we can uh, give you the possibility to experiment our algorithmics uh, in some way, so mobile phone is a good way to do. The, in that way, you you really prove that uh, you save power and you not uh, uh, give a bad user experience to the end user. And, uh, yeah, I, I see a point, but if we need to give away our code uh, in, or distribute it on device before we can actually get feedback about how it works, it's sort of a bit latest that. Uh, do you, you, okay, but you will never know exactly how it's running. So this is a good way to balance uh, in real time your algorithm and have more and more information. So if there is one million uh, dot alpha activation a day of Android mm -hmm. and a potentially 800 million of end user, you know, it's better than uh, do their uh, writing your algorithmics without having any feedback. So you need at least collected information about the use case by uh, by the end user. So not give the, not only put the algorithm in the mobile phone, but at least have an idea of what is the power consumption, how they use the mobile phone to to simulate uh, no, the algorithm using a, a real use case. Yes. Um, well, one of the things that came up at the current summit discussions was that they basically wanted a, um, a set of benchmarks that we can run when, when we have the patch to see if it actually does good or bad things. Um, and waiting until it's in the product and then getting the feedback is, is, is maybe, well, it's, it's definitely useful to have, but we need a filter before that to, to pick which patches are the best ones, um, I believe. Um, yeah. There's a question behind you. Um, I think it's a little simpler than that. And um, in the case of, say, 3D video, there's really two targets which I think uh, have any real worth. Uh, one is uh, if you're playing something like video or you know, just a, a user interface that's 
drawing things on the screen. Um, you want it to hit a certain frame rate so it looks smooth and that's all that really matters. So just the minimum number of cycles to hit that frame rate is all you need to account for. Um, the other target would be latency. So if you're playing a game, um, latency is king. And um, all you need to do there is drive for lowest latency, which is going to use probably more power. Um, as long as the benchmark is taking into account both cases and you have a figure for both, it's really up to the user to decide which particular you know, option they want to choose. To, you know, if they play a game, they probably want to switch into low latency mode. Yeah. Sorry, it's, uh, but uh, of course, right now, video is not uh, done a lot by the CPU. So the load, uh, so I, I understand that the video could be a good, uh, I, but 10 years ago, now if you, if you do a video, the 70% uh, of encoding of the video is done by uh, other part of the COC system. Uh, so even video, the problem is that in the real case, I, I show you an example, very simple. Suppose that you optimize the power consumption of the system of mobile phone and the user is very happy. Then uh, suddenly arrive a mobile phone call, uh, then the CPU need to wake up in some way, but you need very fast feedback to the end user. For, because the, for the end user, it's very important that the ring come and not the wait or delay by the running video. So, this is the, the reason that I said that uh, the use case, user experience is very different for everything that you think uh, in your lab or in your, in your room. Uh, so uh, this is the typical example where uh, uh, collecting data from uh, the, um, the device on the, on the, on the field uh, is very important to understand uh, what the real use scenario. So I, th I think that uh, um, your the um, power aware scheduling need to be very simple so you can collect every data very nice things and do the better calculation inside the scheduler but this is to very uh, basic calculation because <laughs> you end up to spend power <laughs> to understand how how to not spend power so if you need to take the decision in a a slack of 10 milliseconds and you spend 80 milliseconds to take this decision, yeah. you lose the slack. So uh, I'm, 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 ve I'm very more, my approach is very more uh, do it simple, like what you have described, like uh, cal calculate the right balance of the task, this can be do in a simple way. So do a lot of things simple and let uh, the, um, uh, the high level frameworks to decide some power uh, high level power, uh, power aware scheduling decision, and not let uh, all to the kernel. So, I, I, um, this is my idea on what, what would be power aware. So, doing the decision, but uh, quick, even not uh, optimal, but quick, as quick as possible to not spend time in the decision. Yes. Um, there's a question behind you. Yeah. I think I agree in that point that. Uh, it needs to do simple and quick decisions and yes. maybe just very primitive support for power benchmark is needed in the kernel because if you look at power consumption for example of a smartphone and CPU it takes very tiny part of it and you, you, you need to look at the screen Bluetooth and so many other peripherals as well in order to make that kind of decision I don't know if it's suitable to do that in the kernel actually but so to, to start with, like, like the last bullet there, to define use cases, that's, that's very good to, to start with and to have some primitive support first. Yes, fully agree. Um, I think uh, only the kernel really has uh, the knowledge of what power domains are where. Um, I don't think anywhere else really has the information needed to, to do scheduling on that sort of uh, basis. Um, it would be really nice if the kernel could uh, sort of wake up three or four tasks in a row that all want to access the same peripheral so that it can wake up, do three or four tasks, and then just go to sleep again rather than being woken up constantly. Yeah, there's another question. Okay. 
Uh, I just have an idea very personally uh, because, uh, uh, as we mentioned, uh, the, power uh, the power consumptions. Uh, but first, I think uh, the use case is very important for this uh, scheduling. Suppose uh, if somebody just uh, uses the mobile phone, it just uh, could just uh, recognize such like uh, if he has some scenarios to check uh, the new email periodically. If that uh, case is very, very uh, should, surely. That means uh, it use some very lower consumption cost is uh, uh, in design phase is okay. And if someone is just uh, to doing the uh, very high experienced uh, games, so it's just uh, use very high, uh, uh, high performance cost. So I think uh, if we want to just do the dynamic uh, power uh, wearing uh, scheduling, that should be, uh, the application should have the characteristic like that. Some part is just a very heavy load, and some part is maybe some uh, light load. So that is very dynamically. So that means uh, if we want to do these things, maybe uh, arm could provide some uh, tracing or, as you mentioned, uh, some payload uh, detecting mechanism. That part is, could be unique, uh, provided to uh, some uh, open source uh, development peoples, uh, such like the crowdsourcing, you know, crowdsourcing, yeah. Co like crowdsourcing, that means everybody just running the same benchmark or same trace tools on their own device. And they could feedback back to you. What about their consumptions and the use about their applications? It's uh, uh, intensive computing or maybe less intensive computing. So I think uh, if you gather all of these feedbacks, maybe you could just calculate uh, the real uh, scenario is exist or not. And then from hardware side, you could calculate the energy and the power consumption. It's suitable for a little core, or maybe it's just suitable for dynamic change between big core and little core. Because currently, Huawei's high silicons is also manufactured with ARM's big little cores. But currently, it's just face just these problems, challenges. No sure uh, how about the scenarios to, should be placed by that. Because currently from the software side, we do not aware about uh, consumption. Because if I program the applications, I do not know how about the frequency about the course and how about the CPU is idle or not. Because in my program, I do not invoke any system call or in any interface to determine the core is busy or not. I do not know. So that means if we want to do the power, power awareness uh, scheduling, that should be uh, give some uh, hint from the hardware side. Uh, my program have the characteristic like this or not. Suppose uh, like uh, uh, somebody inside the room, if I always inside the room, you should not power off the light. And sometimes I just, uh, uh, many hours I just uh, inside the room, and sometimes I go outside the room. You could uh, turn off the light when i outside. But this should be very, uh, very, very uh, corporately, uh, uh, tightly. That means when I just uh, go inside the room, the, power should, the, the light should be powered on. So that is very, very dynamically inside the operation. So my suggestion is uh, first we focus on the use case and uh, maybe arm provide some tools to uh, find these characters if it's truly uh, in the uh, scenarios user used, we could just uh, to find out and to uh, summarize these characters to provide some power awareness scheduler. Uh, that's all, okay. Okay, thank you, that's interesting. Um, the problem we have right now when, when we talk about power wire scheduling is that inside the kernel, we don't really know about anything that happens in user spaces as it is at the moment. What we can see is just we have some tasks, some run a lot, some don't run a lot, but we have no idea which task is actually an important task that actually directly affects your user experience and we don't know what is actually Yeah, that's very in, challenging, I think. Yeah. In, in, uh, in the background. And that information can only come from, uh, from user space because we simply don't know inside the kernel. Yeah. 
Because from use base, uh, so many applications is run very dynamically. So I think uh, maybe we could not know how about uh, uh, to recognize it's uh, suitable or not suitable. So my suggestion is uh, maybe we could just uh, do this like crowdsourcing. That means provide some basic uh, tools, such, such like uh, we provide some uh, basic method. Maybe it's based on perf, or maybe based on uh, ftrace, or maybe N, uh, LTTNG, yeah, to let the different user to identify how about their application it's, uh, uh, have this character or not via the open source community, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe, uh, very personally, very personally, suggest you. <laughs> Uh, I'm not 100% sure what, what, what the tool would, uh, would do. Um, uh, that tool, should, that means, uh, uh, suppose I am a software development, uh, development uh, web developer. Yeah. I could just find them. maybe my uh, application have this character or not, because uh, I know my application. I maybe understand, so it's possible to characterize the application, understand which section of the code are uh, CPU intensive, uh, which section are not CPU intensive, which section are important for mm -hmm. application point of view. Yeah. Having this information, uh, what this suggests, I think, is uh, having some application program interface that uh, is able uh, to give this information uh, uh, to, the, to the kernel. So yeah. the kernel can make the, some decision uh, or they, I prefer that the CPU made some decision. So suppose that you can inject instruction that is said from, from now and up to this section of the code, it will be a CPU intensive, okay. it's, a, it's an important task. So the CPU knows the, the prefetch instructions, the CPU prefetch knows that from this, this, this instruction to the end, it not go down in power or not switch off a unit like, I don't know, FPU or because you know that you need. Yeah. So the idea is uh, to uh, give information to the CPU when the application needs more power. In that case, it's not the kernel that he knows. The kernel just send the task and the CPU has the knowledge about what is going to execute in this CPU or in this core or in this uh, unit. So if we have, for example, for a, a hell, a ALU unit and five uh, FP unit and this, this, the task said, okay, uh, I not an important application, I can use just one uh, uh, other and just one FP unit and not uh, uh, multiply instruction, so, so not the pipeline a lot and prefer to switch off this unit and let go the application a little bit slow but reduce the power consumption because you have characterized your, uh, your application. Mm, okay, yeah. Well, this is uh, bypass the problem, so understand uh, from the kernel what the application, uh, uh, if the application needs power or not, because it's, uh, it's the application programmers uh, that inform that he needs more power or he needs more, uh, better services, uh, and uh, that's it. This is the same if you do, for example, uh, um, encoding algorithmic, no? Suppose that you, you have a section that uh, you want to reduce dynamically, no? The, uh, the algorithm because uh, you need, uh, you, do, you, you would like to consume less power. So you can inject this instruction and you can say, okay, I need less power basically, or I need less services, so I need, so uh, it's a way to dynamically inform the CPU what is going on at the user layer because the, the kernel doesn't know exactly what the application, what, what, the, what are the application requirement. Mm, I think you could actually get away with just telling, telling the kernel about it because the kernel will do the scheduling and if it knows it can trigger CPU strike or something. But, but it's not fast the decision, it's the way it's uh, instant uh, with the section of the code, correct? Yeah. Yeah. If a program in user space needs to run, then it will be runnable and the kernel will schedule it at some point. And if it yeah. continues to be runnable repeatedly, then it will get scheduled more. 
Yes. Uh, I don't see this as a problem. Well, because it's runnable more doesn't mean that it's something really important. Yeah, yeah. but something that's really important will probably try to run more often on average. Mm, I don't know. You, you can have... You no, you, you can also have some setups where you, you have a multi-threaded scenario where you have a lot of shorter tasks that sort of depend on each other, so they actually add up to become quite a lot of work. Yeah. So if you don't run all of them fast, then you will hurt your user experience. Yeah. So it's, by just looking at the size of the task, it actually doesn't tell you that much about um, how important it is. Well, you, you can use it as the first choice. Well, if it is a big task, then it might be important, but you're not guaranteed that yeah, it's absolutely. important. Yeah. And the same thing the other way around. I have a question down at the back. Well, I think a lot of the things I was thinking of was already talked about, so let me just a little bit summarize it from my point of view. Uh, well, what I th for me, the, the problem is some kind of uh, three-layered. It's uh, when the, the application layer, which actually shouldn't know about how the kernel is achieving any goals. And the kernel has certain means how to achieve some goals. I think the key would be to, to find parameters how you define really from a, an application point of view uh, what this application has and demands. That might be an interface which the, uh, where the, the application when it comes up tells the, uh, the kernel or some layer be beneath it what it wants to do. Or it might even be an interface which is uh, periodically somehow triggered so that some, something can be, be derived from that. That would be for, for video playback and these things. Mm -hmm. I, I would think about maybe these periodical stuff. And then I would think there should be kind of a layer in between which does kind of a translation to, what, actually, to the actual capabilities of the kernel. So that the application really can define that in application words. So the application programmer shouldn't know about how what the kernel does it at the moment or on that machine or whatever. Our goal should be to have kind of generic applications. And on one machine it's, it's done like that and the other machine is done like that. So yeah. we should try to find terms which an application programmer can really in these terms tell about its, his needs. Then we would have some kind of a translation layer and beneath what the kernel can do. Of course, these things are not independent from each other. Yes, I, I fully agree that if, if we are to introduce extra uh, syscalls or extra C groups or something to, to identify which tasks are important or not, it needs to be very, very high level because there's no way that, that the, the application programmer should deal with the complexity of what's happening inside the kernel. And, and I think we can actually get quite far by just having the application programmer tell the kernel if this task is an important one or not, which is a very high level thing and I think it, it should be possible for the application programmer to identify that. Yeah, the, and even the application should not tell one application uh, how the kernel should behave all in all. In all. No. Uh, because usually there, there's something more going on than one application. Of course, maybe yes. one application has the focus and because of that has certain demands, of course, but there's something going on in the background and other applications. Yeah. So this layer somehow would have to sum it up and optimize it all in, well, try to, to meet all the uh, requirements. Yes. So it cannot be just one application controlling the kernel. That's, of course. that's not a thing. Yeah? OK. Yes? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I fully agree uh, with my colleague. Um, I don't think the application should drive uh, anything, because uh, that's part of the definition. We have user space, we have kernel space, and when we write application, we are not supposed to write it for a given platform except a dedicated tool. So uh, a, a tool, uh, sorry, an application is written and it may run on a mo mobile phone, on a tablet, on a PC, whatever. We have written a, a programming language that completely abstracts it, and that's the purpose of writing application and developing fr frameworks, is that the, fr the application doesn't know the platform it's running on, so we cannot we we um, we cannot trust the application also, because 
Well, which I don't know a developer that would, would like to write an application that would voluntarily degrade its maximum performance just to save power. I mean, if we would provide the capability to an application to, to tell the kernel, well, uh, uh, give me uh, the lowest pro priority, I mean, uh, if we say that, the, the application would by default say, give me max performance, because today when you download an application, a 3D application or whatever, you want to make sure you have the highest frame rate possible, that you don't want to have any lag, so no one would... Uh, um, would like to do that, to, to say, okay, I, I want to minimize the power consumption because you know that you, you may degrade your performance and your experience. So I would rather state that we would need some sort of uh, system policy or something that understands what's happening on the platform at the moment, not only on the CPU, but also on the GPU, on the hardware accelerators, on the peripheral buses, some things that understand actually what's the use case running on the platform and that would provide hint to the scheduler, to whatever other processing units, because we talked about a lot of CPU, uh, CPU-centric and CPU kernel, but actually there is also some sort of kernel running on a GPU, running on a DSP, on anything else. So there, there has to be some, I would say, system frame, power management framework that would gather information from all different parts and would uh, feedback this information in the right format to each specific unit. The, 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 the Linux kernel should have some um, APIs provided to, so that we could drive the decision. We could have just, you know, a small cursor, for instance, that you, you would say, well, here today, uh, at the moment, I want to be more power-oriented ori than performance-oriented. And so based on that hint, the scheduler would decide whether or not to pack to to do any sort of decision. I mean, we, we have to understand what, uh, what's happening on the, on the platform. If you have a display that is turned on, if you have the GPU that is also running, it's not only about the CPU today. No, but, but how do we know from inside the kernel what is important with this load? You, you have million, Yes, but million, so it, it's millions not the scheduler that has to know that. It is some sort of system policy that would understand the use case or the use cases that are currently running on the platform and given that knowledge and the, the, permo, the thermal and power budget it knows about would give hints to the, the scheduler to be more or less aggressive uh, in terms of power management. The scheduler would still do the, the scheduler thing and what you, you, you proposed before is very nice to uh, uh, provide some feedback to the scheduler from CPU idle and CPU frag because you're right. Yeah. They are, they are uh, corrupting each other. And so today this is a, a big problem, but then there is also something else on top of the scheduler to help him also yes. take better de decisions based on the other peripheral on the, on the system. <laughs> yeah. Well, about the, 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 the feedback from, from, from the application developer. No, I, no, no, not from the application. No. From but, something else, yeah, some intermediate but, layer, but as was mentioned. Coming back to, to your point about the application developer would always ask for the highest possible performance. I have the same concern, but at the same time, I think if you do that and you use too much power, you get pretty bad reviews on Google you, you Play may, or, or but, whatever. But, but, so uh, I think the application developers should actually start worrying about how they actually write their you, applications. You, you are right, but at the same time, look at uh, Android application, I would say, because they are everywhere. Uh, you would say that you have to write a different application uh, depending on the, the mobile phone, the, the platform it would run, out, run on? No, no it's I mean not, the, it's, the it's, it's not, it, has to, it doesn't have to be platform independent. I think just a hint like saying that this thread I've created here, that actually renders my, my user interface, so that is important, but I have this other thread that indexes my emails or something in the background, that is not important. It's simple things like that that can make it easier for the, uh, for the kernel to actually do the right decisions. Yes, but, but Android can know that. The, the application doesn't need to tell Android that it's using the display. Excuse me? Yeah, yeah, I mean, every, uh, yes, but uh, you, you may put some middleware that would drive I, and I, provide I, the information through the kernel based on... I mean, you, today you know if your Wi-Fi is on, you know if your Bluetooth is running, you know if you are doing a lot of uh, data, data uh, um, sharing, if your display is on, you know how 
the external world is by the, the, the temperature sensor. So you, you have to make your system uh, more, more smart, uh, more aware of in its environment and more system aware so that you, you can understand the use case. Today, the, we have a lot of limitations because the only thing we know is what the, the scheduler is scheduling. And we care very few about what, everything else. If you had this knowledge, you could, and you could uh, concentrate this knowledge into something that knows the platform, the, that, that's exactly the point you, you actually raised about knowing the platform. Then you can take the right decision. If you know that uh, you are listening to MP3 and your, your screen is off, you, you may understand that, well, you are in the train, in the, in the plane, whatever, and you just listen to music, so then you can be very power aggressive. But at the same time, if you know that you have your 3G connection, you know that you are web, doing web browsing or whatever, you know that here the, what's important is the user experience, so then you can relax a little bit the power. You can also know, for instance, you, you could monitor the battery level and get, starts getting more and more aggressive with regards to power the, as long, um, when the battery gets low, things, all things like this. I think it's up to us to more understand the, the, the system, and the system has to, has to know how it is being used, and then take the right decision. And we shouldn't let that to, to application, because the, uh, today the application developer, they don't care much, and they don't, don't want to. That's the point of developing application and developing kernel drivers. I think that my voice is uh, so loud that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think we're we're, we're actually ah, okay, running out sorry. of time. So, so I mean that uh, it's uh, end the user decision if the application is uh, running or not running so fast. Mm. So uh, give the possibility to the developer to decide the importance of the applications or give them the user to rise the importance of the application. Uh, uh, give uh, some information uh, to the, at the, the kind of level at the end that uh, he need to give more uh, budget, let me say, uh, this for this more share of the CPU to this application, or yeah. just because they don't want to, you want to consume to, uh, more power, but because they want to listen to the music or watch a video, I don't see any important uh, any problems on this. So the schedule need to do a quick decision based on the load. But uh, and the, is the end user that can decide to consume or consume less yeah. power. So I want something simple in the kernel yeah. and uh, give the infrastructure at user level and the middleware to uh, give some help to end user to have a better feeling on on the application side. Yeah. Oh, let system D decide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think we need to stop here. We're already over time. Uh, yeah. But I'll hang around. So if you want to continue, then I'm here. Okay, thank you everyone for coming.